mean, why shouldn't we just put some uh, steel on or something like that instead? Well, it's got to go back to what it was originally, really, because, I mean, if you put stainless steel on, it's, uh, it doesn't look the same anyway. And you can see it from eye level from down below. Uh, and plus, it's a great one listed building. So I always agree with putting lead on anyway. I'd never put stainless steel on unless you can, it's not seen. Yes, yes. And I, I guess the lead must be quite flexible, really. It's quite malleable, isn't it? Oh, it is, yeah. Yeah, it can last a long time, but it's got to be fixed properly. You've got to have shank nails in it, and it's got to be clipped in a series of every 12 inches. Uh, and it's got to move. Trouble with lead, if you, don't, if you fix it too much, it doesn't move. And then it contracts and, uh, and it splits straight across the middle. This is what's been happening. But this one's been splitting down the rails on the inside uh, with the movement because it's been fixed too much. But it's lasted 100 years, which is enough, I think. For lead. Yeah, one of the problems that we've had in church recently, of course, is that the roof has simply been leaking. Some of you yeah. may have seen one or two of the photographs of the, the buckets that we, um, we've had to put out during services, which is not ideal. So, uh, Noel, I'm going to let you go up the ladder yeah. uh, and I'll, I'll join you up there on the roof in a short while. Yeah, OK, know. good. I'll let you go up there and then I'll be following you in a short minute. Um, so I'm just going to come back round to you now and uh, um, just mention to you that um, the, the ladder that uh, Noel is uh, scaling and which I'm going to go up in a minute is about uh, 30 feet high, I think. Uh, it goes on to um, a scaffolding platform which is actually um, right adjacent to the west window of the church. When we get up to, the, uh, to that platform, I'm just going to pause for a short while and uh, I'll be able to hopefully show you uh, a picture of the east window at the far end of the church through the west window, which is um, a fairly unique kind of position, really. So uh, I'm just going to pop you into my pocket while I safely scale the ladder, and then I will join you back up there in a short while. Okay. Okay. see you. So I'm just going to try and switch the screen on to Kath who um, hopefully will be able to, oh we don't have her video. Oh hold well on. I think he's nearly there. I think we've missed it. Uh, okay what we were going to try and do is switch to um, Kath who was going to be able to show you a video of David climbing the ladder but um, he's at the top already I'm afraid he's at the top <laughs> okay we've missed that <laughs> window of opportunity so, so you'll need to go back to David okay yeah. okay so at the moment I can't actually see David's screen here we go uh, his name's coming back in um. So David, we can't, we can, um, we can hear you a bit, but we can't see your um, video. So I'm going to ask you to start that again. Now you're up on the platform. There we go. Fantastic. We've got you back. Oh, David, we can't quite, we can't hear you. So you, we need to, um, you need to share your audio again, please. Yes. Hang on a second. Got you. You're back. Okay. Uh, okay can you hear me okay yes we've got you back hang on let me just pin your video again and you can see me as well can you yeah. see me okay great you. yeah um good all right so uh, everyone can see me at the moment uh and um what i need to do if i may is um, go to, hang on, right, okay. So are you looking at my face or are you looking at the, um, the beech tree? We can see your face, David. 
okay. Um, so I, I'm just going to turn the camera around and hopefully, because at the moment I can't see my picture. Can, what, what can you see at the moment? We can now see the beech tree. Okay, good. Right, so in that case, I'm just going to turn around and hopefully you should be able to see uh, into the church itself. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Okay, good, good. So um, here's the view um, down from the west window right along to the east window at the far end of the church. Um, so um, that's, uh, that's an interesting little feature to show you. And just while I'm up here on this part of the scaffold as well, I'm literally going to scan you round church walk. You can see that beautiful copper beech tree, hopefully. And um, I also can show you over towards the rectory. Okay. Now, um, if you give me a moment or two more, I'm going to uh, go up the ladder uh, and um, I will meet you uh, at the top. Okay? Bear with me. Okay, now Rachel, can you hear me and see me? Hi David, we can see the view from the scaffolding. Oh. That's good, okay. Yeah, so um, again, if I turn the camera around slightly, are you able to see the roof itself now? Yes, we've got that. Okay, so let me just give you a little bit of detail here, uh, if I may. First of all, you can see how the, the lead is nice and shiny. It's still fresh out of the foundry. Uh, and although this looks like uh, just uh, paper sheeting, in fact, it's being laid on to um, some boarding, which to begin with, we were a bit concerned about when uh, originally we knew that we had to take the roof off. Our big concern was that we would take the lead off and then find that we've got um, timber beneath, which is rotten. Uh, and that would have bumped up the cost and it would have also taken longer to do the, the work. Well, fortunately, when we got there, we um, found that the, the wood was in good condition. And um, it's, uh, it's been, well, it's only 100 years old, actually, because, as I think I said, the, uh, the roof was last uh, restored in 1926. Um, and actually, you can have a, a, a sense of uh, how the roof has, uh, has changed in terms of its uh, position on St Mary's. Uh, if we go up towards the tower itself, and again Rachel I'm just checking that you are still with me. Yes I'm still with you. Okay, so uh, you can see if you look at the tower, uh, you can see the line two lines indeed, uh, where the uh, steeper pitch has been in place previously. Uh, the first of the, the two lines, the lower of the two, actually is the medieval uh, pitch line of the roof. Uh, and you'd actually see that the church at, at that time would have been significantly smaller than its present size. Um, in the 14th century, it was decided that they would take that uh, roof off and drop the pitch uh, to the level that it is currently. Uh, and, um, well, it, it remained that way uh, right up until Victorian times when they decided to restore the original pitch. So, again, uh, if you look at old pictures of St Mary's from that period, the roof line is, uh, is steeper again. And I don't know whether you can see it from the uh, camera here, but you can just see uh, another 
uh, steeper pitched line etched on the wall itself. Back in 1926, uh, it was decided to uh, drop it down again. So it was up, then it was down, then it was up, and then it was down again. Um, so it feels a bit like my morning exercise routine. Um, and so it's in its present state now. Uh, new clerestory windows were placed in, and um, the, the present roof was uh, placed um, there again in 1926. Now, um, coming back to Noel Porter. Um, hi, Noel. Thank you uh, for joining us again up here. And Rachel, I'm just going to check that you can hear me okay. Yeah, that's fine. We're getting a little bit of wind interference. I'm not sure if it's dependent on which direction you're facing. But... Okay. All right, then. So I'm going to move around slightly in that case. And uh, Noel, would it be better if I actually climbed onto the parapet with you? Yeah. On the parapet, and I'll show you the underside corrosion of the uh, original letter. Okay, so don't worry, I'm not taking any risks here, by the way. Uh, he said, um, Here we are now. We just need to check that we've got the uh 4G signal again. Rachel, are you with me? Yes, we've got you. Brilliant, okay. So, Noel is uh, gonna just explain a little bit about the corrosion that we had under the lead. Now, this is what I stripped off this morning. If you can look quickly, put your camera closely to it. This is the underside corrosion, what's going. That's that's when the, the lead's had its life and it's getting thinner and thinner. Once it starts, this process starts, it's coming to the end of its life. And also the nails, what were in there originally, it was clipped with lead clips, which are these. Well, they drag, they pull out in the end. Yes. And as you can see, the fixings go. Now we use uh, copper clips, which last a lot longer. So hopefully you might have heard that. Um, we've got some background noise from a motorcycle, but um, Noel was explaining that instead of the lead fixings, they use copper now, and indeed copper screws as well, I think. No, we use shank nails. Oh, shank nails. These okay. are shanked. So the original ones aren't shanked. Okay. Uh, they, were, they, were put, they were coming out. They were coming out very easy, but we use these ones to go into there because the shanks on them, they never come out. They don't pull. Because okay. you've got a lot of drag on lead because of the weight. It's 80 kilos drag on it. So it's going to be pulling all the time with the expansion and contraption. So with the shank nails, it lasts a lot longer. And also with paint underneath with a emulsion paint with, mixed with a chalk. And that is supposedly supposed to uh, stop the underside corrosion which you're getting here on the lead. Again, you can see that underside corrosion, Rachel. Again, are you still with me? Yes, we're still with you. We can see the, the corrosion. If you want to, so the shank um, nails that you're using, those are ones with little ridges along them. We can't quite pick that right. out on the video. On. One minute, one minute. <laughs> okay, I'm just looking directly at one of those now. Yeah, so we can see it, but we can't see enough detail. But basically, they're shanked because they've got ridges on them. Is that right? So that they, it kind yeah. of holds them in place. It, it That's holds, correct. Once they're inserted into the wood, they, uh, it's, it's hard for them to get out. Okay, so they're not going to come out anytime soon. Um, yeah, let's just show you how um, the uh, lead is, is rolled when the strips of lead are placed in position. Right, so once the lead's in, we, we turn this clip on and then it goes over and then goes over like that and that's it. And then it's rolled, so the whole thing is held out together, but also it allows for this to happen as well, the movement. You've got to have movement in lead all the time. I guess that's because in the, in the summer uh, it expands every and in the day, winter. Well, in, well, any degree, it's, it's changing all the time, every day and the winter. Yes. It's moving all the time. And you only fix it at the top there. Okay, so you can see the heads of the shank nails, which are actually driven into the boards, which again you can just see underneath. Again, can you see that okay, Rachel? Yeah, we've got that. Thank you, David. Okay, good. Now, Noel's actually standing over one of the rolls, and uh, I was hoping to show you. Uh, an interesting piece of kit that uh, he was using last time, uh, and and that's um, do a bit of rolling now. yeah. Well, okay, we're going to do a bit of rolling for you. Um, I'm going to say rolling. I'm not going to roll down the pitch of the roof. We're actually going to do some rolling of the lead itself. Started at that, like that. 
that and then you're rolling it to that. Okay. So Kent is hitting it with a, it looks like a kind of hammer. In fact, it's a, it's a toughened nylon mallet that just allows the uh, workman to put the lead into place. And um, actually, I'm interested to know, how long does it uh, take to learn the trade? Do you do an apprenticeship? Yeah, it's uh, four years city and guilds. Four years city and guilds. Okay. Yeah, so it's a couple of years to learn how to do this. Yeah. You don't just bash it with a big mallet, you know? Yeah, exactly. You need to know what you're doing. You've got to get the bridge right, the actual first bridge, the height. Once you get that height right, the first process. Yeah. So, okay, just in case you can't hear that because of the noise, uh, basically it's about getting the ridge height correct uh, in such a way as to allow the lead to uh, move. And as Noel has said, the lead will move on a daily basis. Um, it's a bit like, you know, when you're in the tower of the, uh, of the church and the bells are ringing, if you stand on the top of the tower, you can feel it moving. Uh, it's designed to do that. So um, I just want to, while I'm up here, thank you very much, Ken, for that. That gives us a good idea of how it works. You might be able to see um, the north and south transept roofs, uh, which are not made of uh, uh, covered in lead. They are covered in stone tiles. And actually, in the longer term, that's uh, the next big project for us, um, because those stone tiles are gradually reaching the end of their lives, and they will need to be taken taken off and replaced in due course. And uh, while I'm looking at that, I can also show you a lovely view of the Gilkin and the hills beyond, and just a very quick look over the town itself. Again, Rachel, are you still with me? Yeah, we're still with you. We can, uh, we're picking that up. That's great views. That's good. That's good. Can we have a look at the guttering? Is that all right? Um, if I come down to you again, Noel, and I'll just uh, carefully and gently come down the roof. Uh, and um, onto the lead itself. Okay, we're just going to have a look at um, a piece of the guttering here, and we'll come out of the sun, so hopefully it'll give you a bet better idea of what's going on. Here we are. Okay, now, um, this is a new shoot that you're uh, designing, is that correct? That, that's correct, yeah, this is, this is the, the shoot we use now, uh, and then we'll have, a, we'll have an outlet put in it just there, and a weir going across there. So anything blocked in the house, it fills up and goes over the weir, and gives you a sign. Uh, okay. Whenever you see people coming out, anything else on the top, because we'll have a weir while we're across there. Okay. It goes into your tracks. Your original cast, which was sent back to be sandblasted, and that's going back to you say you've got your, your heads up and you sandblast the heads. There's yes. Uh, so they'll be coming back, the original ones are being fitted. And once they're fitted, then I'll put the outlet in because I need to know okay, exactly where they're going. Okay. David? Yes, Rachel? We, we're getting quite a bit of um, background interference there, cause, so could you kind of repeat the what Noel was saying there for Okay, well, in layman's terms, basically, uh, the chute that you see here, yeah, I can feel the wind behind me. The chute that you can see here will have what he calls a weir across, just like a, a piece of lead uh, strip, really, and he's demonstrating that now. And, and that catches any bits of rubble or, or leaves and things, and it gives an indication of, of when it's starting to get blocked, because, of course... Yeah, and there's an outlet that will actually, a circular outlet that will drop into a hopper. Um, just to let you know, actually, that uh, John Frith, who's a local uh, builder and knows this building probably better than anyone else. So he maintains um, the, uh, the gutters uh, each year. He comes up and cleans them out, he keeps an eye on the... Um, the tiles on the uh, transept roofs as well and in fact over the years he's actually had to work very hard at keeping them all up there so that they don't uh, it doesn't leak below okay um, so we're doing all right for time uh, and again I'll just show you the view across towards Bowl Hill 
uh, and uh, there's the old Baptist church there in front of me and the house is on church walk and behind that yew tree is the rectory where, uh, where I live and, uh, and then the rest of church walk itself. Okay. So I'm just going to come back down a little bit and, and show you the, the guttering itself and, and how that's actually clipped in to the um, uh, the stonework itself. Will those uh, pieces of lead be uh, bent back over in due course, Noel? No, no, they will be removed. Uh, okay. We've got a stonemason called on Monday to remove all them. We've got a 40 mil joint and we're going to put new flashings all the way in. Okay. The original flashings. There's, there's no fixings on this guttering at all. Okay. Because you have to let it expand from there all the way to this end all the time. Okay. Because what they originally used to do a hundred years ago, then they used to fix it all the way along and it failed all the time. Yes. And now this new way we're doing it, we don't fix anything. So we just let it, we don't clip it, we just let it run all the time because water runs in here all the time. So it's moving all the time, expanding and contracting. And all this is being replaced, all this flashing is 40 mil joint going in and a new flashing putting in. Okay. So these uh, these stones here are going to be taken off next week by a stonemason. Not, not all, no, no. There's only, only the ones that are loose being taken off. Yes. Uh, the others are staying on, so they'll cut a joint straight in there by hand, forty million. Okay. And okay. Then we put one point five long uh, flashing in. That's your maximum you can put in uh, with three, three clips in either one, and with a plugging joint in a, in a series of um, nine hundred uh, to twelve hundred. Excellent. So uh, again, it's an indication of just how long uh, this job is taking. Um, actually, uh, you hopefully will get a chance to have a look at the time lapse video that Gavin Repton did uh, a little while ago, uh, which showed the lead being taken off. And it, and it was actually taken off fairly quickly, wasn't it, Noel? It was, yeah. The lead's easy to take off. It's putting it back on, which takes the longest. Uh, the process is David, we're getting quite a bit of wind interference again, sorry. Okay, I'm going to see if I can find a, a more sheltered spot. Maybe, uh, Noel, I'll, we can come back yes. down off... Uh, well, I'm going to try on the other side, uh, Rachel, uh, okay. on the other side of the apex. Um, hopefully, we'll still get the um, 4G signal that we're working on today. Unfortunately, we couldn't get a, a Wi-Fi signal. And, Noel, if you follow me across... Um, and we'll come into the corner here um, and hopefully that will be a little bit 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 better i think it is actually feels a bit better anyway out of the wind uh, are you still with me rachel yeah we still got you great stuff okay actually right next to noel here there's just a, a pile of the lead that what will happen to that will that be taken off and uh... this, this goes back to to be recasted at uh, the foundry Uh, melted down within the day and then be made back into these rolls if you look behind you they're the pristine rolls there come back like this. okay and we're talking fairly heavy work yeah. aren't we yeah these are code eight yeah what the architect wanted code eight they, the original ones are in code seven which meant it was uh, less thick less thick yeah okay we've had to go back in code eight because this is what what he wanted yes but as you can see it's uh it's 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 hard yeah, uh, yeah, I don't envy you. Actually, you must be absolutely shattered at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, that's why I only do half a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wondered why it was that you were always going off at about one o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, <laughs> but actually, um, you know, lugging this stuff around is really heavy work. And, uh, you know, it there's, takes... There's the weight on this one, look. Yeah. 86 kilos. 86 kilos, okay, and that's code 8. That's code. Um, so, you know, that's a fairly thick and, yeah. uh, and durable lead. Two of us carrying one of these across the roof, so, you know, you carry 10 a day and you, you know you've done it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'd rather do the job that I'm doing than the one that you're doing, I must admit. <laughs> um, um, while I'm here, right in front of this uh, stone, uh, whatever they call it, what would they call that architecturally? Just a stone parapet, really. Uh, you can see the weathering there. Um, and um, 
this wood originally, the top would have been shaped to, to look a, a little like a... It's oh a finial, God. David. A finial. Thank you, Barry. <laughs> the voice of authority and experience. Uh, that's, that's great. Thanks for helping me out with that one. And Barry, uh, you can just say, while you're with me then, on the top, what would have been the shape there? I remember you said something about a particular shape that was used. Oh, no, that's up on the tower. <laughs> The t at the top of the finials on the tower are in the shape of lotus buds, okay. which, which was part of the enthusiasm for all things Egyptian in the 1820s. Fantastic. Thanks for that, Barry. That's, that's, that's very helpful. In fact, as I'm looking up at the tower, you can, you can get a good view of the clock there and also the louvers actually into the bell tower itself. And uh, just in case you think that uh, Chesterfield is the only church in the county with a, a, a spire that leans, ours does actually slightly lean to the right. Um, not as, uh, it's not as extreme as the one at Chesterfield, the, the crooked spire. Um, but anyway, again, all part of Worksworth's quirkiness, which is one of the appeals of the church itself, I think, to those who visit. Um, just coming back to Noel for a minute, um, what are you standing on then, Noel? This piece of lead here. This, this, this is one of the leads you can come in um, next, so this will be going into that place here. So, so of course, we'll knock it up to uh, four or five inches either side, and then we'll flip it over, paint it with the chalk emulsion, uh, leave it to dry for a couple of minutes and then we'll put it straight in place. Okay, so actually uh, this backing material here, uh, it just looks like uh, brown paper to me, but yeah, we were still, you know, we're still unsure whether, we, you know, it's obviously it works, but it's more of a membrane than anything else um, to stop the underside corrosion again and uh, with condensation coming in from the church. I mean, a big thing with churches, what's starting this underside corrosion is uh, heating. Uh, the radiator's coming on and off as well, and, you know, and that's never used to have heating. So that could probably be causing it. So we're putting this on to see if we can help it out. That's interesting, because sometimes when the heating's on, it doesn't feel as though we've got any heating in there. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah. And in fact, just lately, uh, in the last couple of days, we've had to put a new boiler in as well, which has bumped up the cost. And uh, that reminds me, actually, talking about cost, because we're, we're almost there. Um, if you'd like to make a donation towards the, uh, the, the roof, we've still got another £10,000 to raise, and we've set up a Just Giving page. Um, so if you just go onto the Just Giving website and then search for Worksworth, then you'll see one or two of the um, Just Giving causes that are happening around here. Uh, and St Mary's is there. You can click onto that and you can make a donation. As they say, in a certain place, every little bit helps. But actually, and in truth, what we do want to do is make sure that Worksworth's a church remains a community facility for at least 100 years and, and longer. Uh, and we can only do that really with the support of, well, the National, um, now I've got to remember, Heritage National Lottery Fund. I think that's the correct title. Um, the National Lottery Heritage Fund, David. It's the National Lottery Heritage Fund. Thank you, thank you. I always get that wrong, don't I, Rachel? I'm sorry. They have anyway. changed it around, so it's still it's a bit of a head scratcher. It doesn't come as uh, naturally as it did. No, it doesn't. Um, uh, but they've been very generous in their support and have given us, uh, well, up to 62% of the actual cost. The rest we've had to raise ourselves, and I will say um, only this week, Longcliffe Quarries, Longcliffe have uh, made a significant donation as well towards uh, the, the residual cost. But the rest we have to find ourselves from the congregation and from our friends, which is why basically I'm asking you to cough up, really, it's as simple as that. Uh, it'll help in the longer term. Um, well, I think we're almost done. I'd just like to say thank you, uh, Noel, to you uh, for explaining that so very carefully and clearly. Uh, and we're very grateful to you and your colleagues. And Kent, who's the silent, uh, silent guy over there. Uh, thank you, Kent. And also Kath, who's been 
just quietly taking photographs. Kath's been actually providing some of those fantastic photographs that you see on the Facebook page uh, of the work itself. We're just coming up on half past 11. You can hear the clock there. Uh, I hope that you've really enjoyed this tour. I hope that you will continue to take an interest in it. Uh, and I wish you a, a good day for the rest of your day. So thanks, thanks for listening. David, before you go, um, yeah. there's just a question. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to answer that right now or if it's one we need to get back to James on. So James Boone has asked, was zinc ever considered as an alternative roof finish to hopefully do away with concerns of lead theft? So I don't know whether maybe Barry might be able to help with this one as well, whether that was considered earlier on in the um, process. Well, for a grade one church um, that has a lead roof, in order to change the material, you have to demonstrate there's a serious danger of theft. And hopefully the nave roof was, uh, is well overlooked. Um, we have to be very careful about monitoring uh, the danger of theft. But I don't think Historic England would have given permission for the change. Well, there is that. And actually, I will say that um, as part of the, well, one of the conditions for the church to be insured is that there should be uh, an up-to-date alarm system um, and a new alarm system to replace the current one that we have is going to be put into place um, once the job, uh, well, actually during the time that the work is, is being undertaken. And that's on a 24 hour monitoring system with CCTV cameras overlooking the roof as well. So they're infrared, which means that they can actually, or they, they, they're able to uh, see who it is that's actually on the roof at any one time. Uh, so hopefully the, the, the roof will be adequately protected. And in fact, um, I mean, it's a very good question to ask. Um, some churches have used turn-coated steel. In fact, one of our parishes, Bradbourne, has got part of the roof in, in turn-coated steel, uh, but it's not overlooked. It can't be seen from ground level or any other place because as Noel said earlier on, it's not as visually appealing as the uh, lead roof itself. Just while I'm still on, uh, uh, Rachel, do you have any other questions that people have asked maybe we could address? Um, it was more a suggestion, actually. So we've had a suggestion from Steve saying, um, is there a possibility of using a small amount of the waste lead to cast in, into Toadman paperweights as a fundraiser? So, <laughs> well, so there we go, an entrepreneur in our mix. <laughs> um, actually, the, the vast majority of the lead in fact, almost all of it, Steve, is going to be back on the roof. Um, there has been a request, uh, which we've said yes to, from the Worksworth Festival, who want to buy some of the lead from us. So there will be a little bit left over. I mean, it will need to be recast and brought back. And um, we're going to use that lead to uh, create a sculpture, which will be inspired by the church itself, and which will be uh, available at somewhere in the church, or, or maybe be in the town um, but that won't happen until the festival takes place next year because of course as you'll know this year's festival has had to uh, to be cancelled because of, of COVID-19. Do you want Any to say questions? something about the plaque David? Oh okay um, well Barry go on uh, let's have a change of voice do you want to say a little bit about it you feel happy to do so? I can't remember the dates but um, the is stored in the boiler room um, a very early plaque by an early um, lead fitter um, recording his name, Gil Pickard, I think, is it 1830 or something? Um, and then there's another one on this roof um, recording the fact it was uh, relayed in 1926 and there will be a uh, further plaque fitted into this roof saying it was relayed in 2020 with the names of the rector, the church wardens and the uh, lead, two leaders of the uh, project team and the names of Norman and Underwood who laid the 1926 lead roof. 
that indeed yes so i mean that you know that's really good they've got that history and um, one other name that will be on there actually is graham rennie who many of you may know previous church warden was an architect himself and it was graham that started uh, this whole process off a little while ago uh, and when he was ill he introduced martin Sutcliffe, who's been the kind of project lead he's been he's been my representative through all of this and I'm very grateful to him and all the rest of the team, actually, for the huge amount of work that they've put in um, to enable us to get to this point uh, and beyond. So.